वेलकम टू इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ क्वालिटी एंड रिलायबिलिटी हाय दिस इज हेमन कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल्स पार्ट वन We recommend viewers to watch the following videos before watching this video for better viewing experience. Normal distribution and z-score and the central limit theorem. We have explained in our previous video on normal distribution how concept of standard normal distribution can be used to determine areas under normal distribution. any value on x axis of normal distribution can be transformed to corresponding standard normal value z the z score can be calculated as z equal to x minus mu upon sigma areas to the right or to the left of x and z are equal when this transformation is used a standard normal distribution has got mean 0 and standard deviation of 1 link to the video on normal distribution is provided in the description of this video in our video on central limit theorem we have explained that according to central limit theorem averages of sufficiently large sample sizes tend to be approximately normally distributed even if individual data are not normally distributed also it follows from central limit theorem that if the population mean is mu and standard deviation is sigma then the sampling distribution of averages will have mean mu and standard deviation sigma upon square root n and sigma by square root n is known as standard error of mean but why do we need confidence intervals in the first place consider the following examples a soap manufacturer is setting up for production of a batch of 100 gram soaps if the mean weight is not on target some soaps will be underweight or overweight another example a soft drink manufacturer is setting up line for production of batch of 300 ml cans incorrect setting of the mean will actually result in underfill or overfill A manufacturer of fuel injectors wants to ensure that mean flow of injector cups is on target so that engine emissions will meet regulatory requirement. We never know population parameters in real life. We therefore draw conclusions about populations based on samples using some statistics. we are therefore never 100% sure about our decisions confidence intervals are based on certain confidence level typically 90 95 or 99% confidence level means nothing but probability consider example of a soft drink manufacturer the production supervisor is setting up line for production of batch of 300 ml cans incorrect setting of mean will result in underfill or overfill of the cans let us assume that the tolerance for fill volume is 5 ml previous data shows that the standard deviation of the filling process is 1.5 ml the supervisor has taken sample of 25 cans and calculated mean of the sample as 301 ml what is the confidence interval for population mean at 90% confidence level let us review some theory before we solve this example let us begin with confidence interval for z values or z score with reference to standard normal distribution as we have explained in the video on normal distribution z score is given by x minus mu by sigma where mu is the population mean and sigma is the population standard deviation however in this case we are looking at distribution of sample averages with mean mu and standard deviation of sigma by square root n the sigma by square root n is based on central limit theorem therefore z score is equal to x bar the sample average minus population mean mu divided by sigma by square root n we want to find out limiting values of z on the left 
as well as on the right tail such that areas between these values equals confidence level. This is the standard normal distribution with mean mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1. You can see that in the tails, the area is 5% as we are talking about confidence level of 90%. Therefore, area in both the tails will be 100 minus confidence level percent, which is the alpha risk. This will be equally divided on both the tails and therefore will be alpha by 2 in each tail. We denote these two limiting values as minus z alpha by 2 and plus z alpha by 2 with reference to standard normal distribution. Now let us determine the confidence interval for sample mean. Here is the distribution of sample averages as per central limit theorem. Now we know z is equal to x bar minus mu by sigma by square root n. Therefore, for the left tail value, minus z alpha by 2 is equal to x bar minus mu by sigma by square root n and it follows that x bar lower equals mu minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. Similarly, for the right tail, x bar upper will be equal to mu plus z alpha by 2 into sigma by square root n. We can write both these values in one equation as mu plus minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. Using these equations, we can estimate limiting values of sample averages. Remember, we are still talking about extreme values of the sample averages for a given confidence level. So the confidence interval for sample mean is mu plus minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. Have we solved the problem? Not really. In real life, we take only one sample and do not know the population mean. So how do we solve this problem of determining confidence interval of population mean? Now let us see how to determine confidence interval for population mean when we know only a single value of the sample mean. We know that the sample mean will lie between the two boundaries of the sample average determined by mu plus or minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n with probability equal to confidence level. If the actual sample average is at the lower bound, that is at mu minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n, then the population mean will be to the right of this value at a distance z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. In this case, the population mean will be x bar lower plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. Let us see a figure that explains this. This is x bar lower. So we take a reference of the current x bar that we found. Obviously, mu will be to the right of this value by a distance z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. And this is the distribution that it will have. And if the actual sample average is at the upper bound, that is at mu plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n, then the population mean mu will be to the left of this value at a distance z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. In this case, the population mean will be x bar upper minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. The following figure explains, this is x bar upper and we assume that x bar upper is somewhere here. So the population mean mu will be to the left of this x bar by a value z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n and this is the distribution. Based on this discussion, we can conclude that the confidence interval for population mean mu will be equal to x bar plus or minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. Let us understand the interpretation of confidence interval for population mean. And in this case, our confidence level we will assume at 90%. This is the distribution of sample averages with alpha risk distributed equally on both tails, that is alpha by 2 area on each side. Let us assume that the first sample average is x bar 1. Then we can construct a confidence interval around this x bar plus or minus 
into sigma x bar, where sigma x bar is sigma by square root n. Or let us consider one more sample, x bar 2. Again, it will have another confluence interval for population mean. x bar 3 will have a similar confluence interval and so on. So we go on taking random samples and calculate the sample averages and construct the confidence intervals. Now interpretation of this confidence interval is that approximately 90% of such constructed confidence intervals around the sample means will include the population mean mu and about alpha risk percentage confidence intervals will not include the population mean mu similar to the red confidence interval shown over here. This is a table of standard normal distribution. You can download it from our website www.world-class-quality.com. This showed the z-scores and the areas to the right of specific z-score. For 95% confidence level, alpha risk is 5%. Therefore, alpha by 2 is 0 0.025. So if we look at area beyond Z as 0 0.025, the Z score will be 1.96. And for 90% confidence level, alpha risk is 10% or 0.1, alpha by 2 is 0 0.05. Correspondingly, the Z score is 1.645 or we can round it off to 1.64. Let us now apply this theory to the application example of soft drink. Confidence interval for population mean mu is given by x bar plus minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root n. In the soft drink example, x bar is equal to 301, sample size is 25 that is n, alpha risk is 10% or 0.1 and standard deviation of population is given as 1.5. Therefore, confidence interval for population mean will be 301 plus minus 1.645, 1.5 upon square root of 25. And if we calculate this, we get values of 301.49 and 300.51. The target mean was 300, which is not included in these values. If we represent this graphically, x bar is equal to 301. The confidence interval is 301.49 upper and 300.51 lower. But the target is 300. So the target 300 is not included in the confidence interval. We must therefore conclude that our process is not centered at the target of 300 and therefore must be adjusted again. Let me ask some questions to the viewers for better learning. Question 1. What will be the effect if the sample size is reduced to 9 instead of 25 in the application example of soft drink cans? Question 2. What will be the effect of increasing the confidence level to 95 and 99% instead of 90%? To summarize, we can say that confidence interval for population mean mu is equal to sample average x bar plus or minus z alpha by 2 into sigma by square root n. Please note that the population standard deviation sigma must be known for applying this formula. We will explain procedure to determine confidence interval when sigma is not known in part 2 of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on Reliability Engineering, Six Sigma and Statistical Quality Control. Click the subscribe and bell icon for getting intimations on the future videos.